and you work for somebody at the end of the week, you get a payback that, you know, you same when we have faith in God after a period of time, there will be a reward to that. Say, I will bless you. Hallelujah. And uh, so this morning we are going to look at uh, 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 a miracle. Amen. And uh, in fact, this is the first miracle that Jesus did. Uh, it's in the book of Genesis, in the book of John. John chapter 2, starting from verse 1. You can read from that. You've got your Bibles and your phone or your thing. Have a look at it. It's good to, to read the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall not be by prayer alone, but by every word. And, uh, uh, be, a, be a student of the Word. God speaks to me through the Word. If you think God is not speaking to you, maybe you're not spending time in the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't read His love letter, but you want to hear His voice. People don't want to read His love letter, but they want to hear His voice. You can't hear it because what He's given you, you attend to that. And uh, therefore, I just ask you to do that. Uh, be focused. And, uh, so here's the first miracle, the first miracle that Jesus did. So, book of John, we're just going to read that. And it says here in chapter 2, verse uh, 1 of it, we'll read from there anyway. It says that on the third day, there was a, a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus uh, was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they had wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, We have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have you, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto him, His servant, whatever he said unto you, you do it. And uh, there was just set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three first kings of peace. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, Draw now and bring it to the governor of the feast. And they brought it to the governor of the feast. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water uh, that was wine, made wine, he knew not where it came from, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said unto the bridegroom, And every man at the beginning of the of the set of good wine, but when men are well drunk, then that which is inferior is, is, is brought forth. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory to the disciples and the disciples believed in him. So this is that. So here I want to say something. Every time there's a first. Amen? Every time there's a first in the Bible, there's a lesson for us. So here we begin to find the first miracle that Jesus ever did. The very first. Hallelujah. So in every time there is the first then it's a lesson. Every time God does for the first time, it's a lesson. Then we're going to, to, to have a look at the lesson. Lesson of, uh, this is a lesson on miracles. How, we, how many of you want miracles? I need it. <laughs> a lot of us need it. <laughs> Most of us need it, you know. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, we need a miracle. We need uh, God to move on our life. And then we believe you, you will move. And here is a lesson on miracles. Amen? So I, I'm, I'm going to, to, to share with you this lesson. I want you to take some pointers. Uh, so the, the, the first point I want to say is that uh, every first has got a lesson. The, the first one. You know. And uh, so here is this wedding happening in the, in, in the nation of, uh, in the city of, the village, or probably was the village. It wasn't a city, it was a probably a village. Okay, you mean? Uh, those things. Uh, and uh, here we begin to find that uh, uh, Jesus is invited and his uh, disciples is invited and together Mary is invited. So probably it's a family that they knew very well. Amen. That they've invited Jesus and Jesus has uh, uh, just come out of, the, uh, come out of uh, Jordan. He's been anointed as Messiah. Amen. And he summons to go and do the great signs, wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. Uh, and the, 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 not, the, 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 Commission is there, the anointing is there, the release is there, everything is there. And therefore Jesus turns up to this wedding uh, where with his disciples. And it's coming in with his disciples uh, uh, that is a need that is being made evident. That need was uh, this wedding party, they've run out of wine. They've no more wine. And you know the, the, the 
the, the family, the bridegroom family, will be put in shame, you know, especially if you are wedding and you run out of food or run out of those just wine is a very pertinent part of, of the wedding ceremony and uh, when they ran out of wine, uh, uh, the, 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 the bridegroom family is, is a shame. Is an, and, and I want to say, I want to talk about wine. Wine in our life represents joy, purpose, fulfillment. Amen? God's purpose. And uh, uh, sometimes in our life we we'll run out of wine. Amen? And uh, that is a light, that is a need, that is a problem. That is a problem, you know? Because you don't have the wine, uh, you, you don't have the wine of the Holy Ghost, you know? You don't receive the God's blessing. And when God's blessing is not there, you know, things don't happen as, as they're supposed to, supposed to happen. And here we begin to find that the uh, uh, the, the Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes to here. There's a problem. There's a problem in this marriage. They run out of wine. All that family, that probably her relatives, oh, my family, my relative is going to be put in shame. Oh, what a, it's a terrible thing. That, sometimes terrible things happen to us. Amen? Things that we plan for, these purpose, I think they didn't plan to run, wine run out, you know. I don't know whether they need to order enough of it or what, but you know, it's an embarrassing situation. Some, sometimes our life we are embarrassed because things are going wrong. You know, things are not happening the way we want to happen. And when you know wine means you have no joy. So your life is uh, miserable. Hallelujah. A Christian, but a miserable Christian. And I know many of them. Hallelujah. Sometimes some Christians are real miserable. Uh, you know, you don't want to hang around that. You'd rather go and hang around with the world because uh, at least there's some joy. And some Christians are just cranky. Cranky as I won't say what. Hallelujah. But they're real cranky. Why? There's no joy. There's no wine in their life. There's no joy. Everything is a problem. And even their mindset, ah, you know, they're just cranky people, you know. Uh, nobody likes a cranky Christian. Hallelujah. You are one. Repent in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, if it's not working, just come to the altar. We'll lay hands on you. <laughs> Amen. But uh, uh, here is a problem with that, uh, that no, no wine. Hallelujah. Uh, no wine means uh, just like a no wine, no job. And your life might be just day to day, you know. And uh, there is, a, there is a, a no wine, no joy. There's a problem. So we all have problems, amen? Problems, and, and they need a miracle. They need a miracle in this place. And so we begin to find that uh, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and... Uh, okay. Ma Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, goes up to Jesus and tells Jesus, Jesus, you do something about it. Fix the problem for us. Because the angel told me when you are born before that you are going to be the Messiah, you're going to be the savior of the world, and, 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 and all that. And, and I believe they get the answer. And uh, so so was Jesus. So the truth is yes, he was making a, a true statement. Because Jesus had been to the Jordan, Jesus had been to the wilderness, Jesus has been filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus has been commissioned by the Father. Jesus has finished his 40 days. Hallelujah. Fasting and praying. Now he's come out. He's come out full of the Holy Ghost and power, ready to do miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that, that's the truth of the matter. And here he begins to tell you. Uh, so Mary knows about that about Jesus. So uh, what Mary does is uh, Mary says that, uh, ba, 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 who shall I call? Daniel, I shall call upon you any time you can see Daniel. So Daniel will be Jesus for the moment. Hallelujah. Amen. His, his hair is not long enough, but he's got the beard to make up for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So this is Jesus. And uh, Mary comes to Jesus and tells Jesus, Jesus, we have a problem. This is what's happening in the marriage. Our relatives are going to be put to shame. Jesus, you do something about it. And uh, do a miracle. Amen? Do a miracle. Amen. Hey, it's a great thing to expect for Jesus to do that, you know. Uh, because uh, 
Jesus doesn't, doesn't have a bottle shop. Hallelujah. He can't supply wine in the natural. Hallelujah. And, but they are looking for natural wine and, uh, you know, so he, he comes in. And therefore, sometimes when we come to God with our need, with our problem, with our whatever we are going through, we come to God and say, God, I know, I know the promises of God, all the promises of God are yes and amen. I know you are a mighty God with man what is impossible is possible with you. And Lord Jesus, I love you. And Lord, I have given my life to you. Lord, I want you to do a miracle for me. God, I need you to solve this problem. It's a very big problem, by the way. Amen. And, 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 and uh, I want you to solve this problem. I want you to make the way. Dear Lord Jesus, uh, please help me. We come to Jesus like that. And we have a need in our life. We need a miracle, a healing, a deliverance, or whatever it is you need. And, and we approach God. Hallelujah. How many of you done? Come to Jesus, all of us do that because uh, that, that is why God is there for. God is there to help you. Amen. God is there to bless you. God is there to heal you. That, that's God's job. Your job is to ask. The Bible says, ask, you shall see. So we are asking and your job is to ask. Amen. But today we are talking about miracle. So miracle is another category. Hallelujah. Miracle takes a little bit more. Hallelujah. It needs a little bit more. And uh, so she comes and she begins to ask him, uh, 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 Mary, I'm Mary, I'm telling Jesus, uh, would you please do it for my relative's sake, please? <laughs> for my sake, my relative's sake, uh, we want some joy back in this wedding. And we don't want them to go around gossiping all over the village that we went to that wedding, that fellas ran out of wine and there wasn't enough wine. I was in a very good wedding and I, I tell you, you know, I, we, we don't want them to gossip about us, amen? They want, we want to say that we, they got everything that they need, amen? No, that's not. And uh, so, but, but this is the interesting thing. The interesting thing is that Jesus answered them and Jesus said that, uh, uh, Jesus says, Woman, what has your problem got to do with me? I'm not interested. Leave me out of the picture. Amen. Maybe a relative, maybe our relative, but hey, listen, I'm just an invited guest just like you. I've been invited to this wedding. I've come and then, you know, there's no wine. Well, I can live with that. You know, but uh, don't, don't put your problem onto me. You know, and, uh, and, and yet, Jesus seems totally indifferent. Jesus didn't care about them. Mary cared about the relatives, you know. And, but Jesus didn't care about it. And sometimes God seems to not care about your problem. How many of you that? Amen. You keep talking to me, think that oh, he doesn't care. You pray to him. I keep asking him. I look at him. He just doesn't care. He doesn't have, and, and you pray that prayer and you pray that. The, the, the heaven is like glass, you know, nothing is going on, nothing is coming back. You seem stuck in that place and, and seems to be a long time and, and you're crying out to Jesus and Jesus is not, you're doing, I'm doing my bit, but Jesus is not doing his bit. That's a problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm doing my bit, but Jesus is not doing his bit because I'm asking, he said, ask you shall receive, so I ask. But he's not releasing it. It's his problem. I'm not the problem either. And sometimes we feel like that. Amen. God is not answering me. How long have I got to pray? You know? When is the miracle going to take place? God. God. Because us. Woman, leave me alone. That was Jesus' answer to his mother. Woman, leave me alone. <laughs> Some. Some men sometimes say that with your own. Woman, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, just leave me alone. He wanted to be left alone, amen? And, and he was saying that, uh, I'm not going to answer this prayer. Amen? I'm not going to answer. No, yeah, mind. I can. I don't have anything to do with it. Amen? I don't have anything to do with it. Your problem, your relative's problem. And when you go and sort it out yourselves. <laughs> he didn't say those words, but that's what he meant. He didn't want to get involved. And sometimes when you're praying to God and seeking the face of God, believing for a miracle breakthrough, it doesn't look like he's coming through for us. Amen. It doesn't seems nothing is happening. And, and sometimes you feel that 
God is not hearing your prayer. And sometimes we get disappointed, amen? We get disillusioned and we get depressed and uh, uh, we, we get, uh, uh, you know, we really go down. And sometimes we do that. That's why we've been praying for a long time. Hallelujah. God is not coming through. I'm praying, but it's not answering. My problem is a problem. Hallelujah. Because I'm doing my part. I'm asking and not receiving. And uh, so sometimes for miracles, uh, 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 de de denial, Virginia, God's denial, amen? God, since God is denying you what is right to you, you know? And uh, Mary knows that uh, uh, she's a savior. And then uh, what Jesus does is, Jesus goes and, and I tell them to Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what Jesus does is, yes, Jesus goes and he's born this <laughs> Now, 
God says, sit down next to Jesus and say, whatever he, whatever he says to you, do it. Hallelujah. Look at Jesus. Whatever, so you look to him and you're waiting for him. Amen. Whatever he says to you, you do. Amen. So here we can just be in that posture, just stand there. So here we begin to find Jesus has said no. His time has not come. He seems not to be interested in your case and your affair and your problems. But uh, uh, Mary does not let go of Jesus. Uh, he doesn't take no for an answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most of us, listen, I'm not interested. My time is not yet come. It's good enough to, to put it back on the shelf. <laughs> but Mary says that. Wrong answer, she tells Jesus. Wrong answer. Hallelujah. Wrong, wrong, no, not my time is wrong answer. You know, uh, 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 wrong answer. I need the right answer. That's not the answer. And sometimes when we ask God and we seek God, God seems to be giving us a wrong answer. What's the wrong answer? I'm not going to do it. Or seemingly we don't want to do it. Wrong answer seems to be I don't interested. It seems to be your prayers are not going anywhere, you know. You're stuck in the place that you are in. And, 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 and uh, sometimes we lose heart and we lose faith because God is not coming through. My miracle is not happening. My healing is not happening. My deliverance is not happening. God has forgotten me. How long more to pray God? Lord, God. Oh, he does that. And sometimes uh, uh, we get weary, amen? But the Bible says, do not weary in doing good. Hallelujah. You, got, you, you can get tired, you know, because you're not, you see, when you don't see an answer, you get tired, amen? Uh, 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 think, uh, what for a second, um, um, delay the uh, well, the heart, what is it? Something about delaying that. Uh, Make the heart sick. Make the heart sick. What, what's the full verse? Hope different, hallelujah. How many of you hope different here? Put up your hand. Be fruitful. <laughs> Between God and an answer, your prayer, that's what it means. <laughs> that's what it simply means, you know. When your prayer is not answered, your heart is sick. How many of you have sick heart here? Yeah. All of us, most of us, still believe that God answers some prayers. Or some prayers. Listen, God has answered some prayers. There's some prayers that God hasn't answered. In, in your life, that we pray and answer. Uh, answered prayers and unanswered prayers, God is in both equation. Hallelujah. God is in both. Amen. And He will help you. He called you. He chose you. He loved you. He died for you, Jesus. Uh, you know, He sent the Holy Spirit. He will answer your prayer. But sometimes uh, He seems to be not interested. What is your problem, God, to do with me? Please go away. Leave me alone. And that's when Jesus said, please go away, just leave me alone. Your problem is not my problem. Hallelujah. God seems indifferent. And, uh, but Mary, uh, Mary just not, and, and the second thing is that the timing issue. Hallelujah. And, and that, is, listen, that is a place for timing, but I'll explain the timing in a moment. Uh, but everything God does uh, in, in, in His time, amen, in His time. But uh, what Mary does is get, activates faith. This is servant faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith. Faith is standing just right next to me. And he stirs up faith. Uh, no, he stirs up faith. Actually, I actually woke up. Woke up faith. <laughs> I awakened faith. Hallelujah. She was there nicely lying down and, you know, just almost going to sleep. I awakened, you know. Say, get up, sweetie. Get up here. Get going to work today. Amen. And uh, we're going to do some work here. And uh, so I awakened her, uh, and, 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 and so she positions her uh, 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 faith, and the servant faith, I call him servant faith, and say, whatever he says to you, you do. Amen? Hallelujah. You are the servant, I am the servant. Dear Lord Jesus, what do you want to want us to do? But, but Jesus already said, what did he say? Two things. I'm not interested. My time has not yet come. He's already said his peace. It's settled. When Jesus says it, it is settled. Amen? Amen? When Jesus says it, it's settled. He settled the argument. Amen? He settled the conversation. My time has not yet come. I don't have anything to do with this. That's good. Amen? I'm not going to do any miracles here. Sorry. Sorry, Mom. I know you love me. I know you love this family. I know I'm very close relative. But ain't nothing ain't happening tonight. I am going to do nothing. Sorry, very sorry. 
Amen? But uh, uh, faith, we demand your way from faith and says, what are you doing? So the position of the Bible is, they have an expectation. They are expecting. Even though Jesus had said no, he said, he's, he's just given us a wrong answer. We're waiting for the right answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus has given us the wrong answer. We want the right answer. Jesus Peter needs 
the man of God. If you want to walk, walk on water, you can't sit in the boat and walk on water. You've got to get up. Some of us need to be doing something to see how very good things live. And so that you just need to ask God, God, what must I do, Lord? You are doing that. You promise that. You know that. But God, what must I do? As you begin to seek the Lord, He will begin to tell you what you've got to do. Hallelujah. That's working with God. Not just waiting on God, but working with God. And that's what this uh, servant, she went over to the waterfall, uh, to, to the edge of the village, got the water. Yeah. I don't know, know how long it took. It looks like a pretty long time. So big the waterfall. And the container is only that small. He said, she goes and comes back, she goes and comes back, she goes and comes back. And, and he said, fill it to the drink. So I want to say to you, uh, uh, for miracles to take place, uh, one thing we need the word, one thing we need a miracle worker, that's Jesus. Uh, third thing is that we need to cooperate. And I just want to ask you, just, just, just ask yourself this question. What are the miracles that you're looking for? How are you cooperating with God to see that come to pass? I don't know what it is you got to do. I pray you don't know. Amen. It will be different things for different people. Amen. Amen. It will be just a couple. What is it? What is you want, want me to do? What is it you want me to do? Ask that question. Ask them, what is it? You tell me. You like, you know, you, you, you ask him, Lord, what, what, what's the problem? You got unforgiveness. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe you know, maybe it was he, he did uh, something else you may be doing or not doing something, some area, and, and just ask God. So, uh, and uh, he, 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 so they went to the age of the city, pick up the water, and come back and take the bed. So, the other thing is that for miracles is the timing. Amen? The timing. The timing is, uh, is when the water pot is full. Hallelujah. Water pot is full. Uh, just put the points down, Virginia. Uh, when the water pot is said, fill it up, fill it up to the to the to the brim. Amen. So there is a, a, a bit of a time delay. It didn't happen instantly. Listen, how how many of you know that Jesus could have filled up the water pot himself by a word? And the next thing that he could have turned it in wine with a word. Amen? Amen? Can he? Can Jesus do that? Absolutely. Now he said he wants you to work. He wants you to do something. He wants you to participate in your own miracle. He says, you, you need to cooperate with me. You've got to work with me and, and I will do it. And therefore, we begin to find that, uh, so this point I want to say earlier, the, the Jesus being here, Jesus, is, his, his time has not yet come. His time has not yet come. So he's saying, my time has not yet come. But then when faith knocks, when faith does not give up, when faith hangs in there, and servant faith is awakened, and, and he says, uh, then he says, go and fill the water pot. Hallelujah. <laughs> Count six, brother, and six water pots. <laughs> go and fill the water pot. Jesus, if I were to say this, Jesus changed his mind. Somebody will pull the miracle out of him. Somebody will, will obey him. Somebody will do something that he wants to do. And when the servant when Mary had faith and, and, and commissioned faith, uh, Mary had faith in heart. But when he would awaken faith and, and said, Go and whatever he says you to do it. And, and in this together, Jesus changed his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus did not really change his mind. An atmosphere was created for the miracle to come. Amen? There was an atmosphere of faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. And when you begin to see faith in his mother and obedience in the servant, that they would not let Jesus go. And, and Jesus said, you know, and, 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 and men was expecting the miracle, even though he said it's not his time, and he said that Jesus turned around and said, 
How do you say to you, church, sometimes you've got to create an atmosphere for Jesus to do his miracle? Faith and obedience. You know, and, and, and you know, and, and, and when faith and his obedience, okay, this is the thing. When faith is and obedience is there, the time of God is there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When God can see faith, when God see, can see obedience, then his timing is come. Amen. Prior to this, Jesus did not see faith and obedience, so he said, no, my time has not yet come. Because the atmosphere is not. Miracles need an atmosphere. Miracles need an atmosphere. I, I told you to talk about atmosphere, just, just to touch on atmosphere. You know, when the, when, the, when the little girl died and they put her up in the room, amen, Jesus said, uh, 12 disciples, but uh, uh, a need was there, a problem was there, a miracle need to take place, but the atmosphere wasn't there. So what he did was he took his three disciples, I think Peter, James, and John, he said that the rest of you, you just stay out there. I'm taking Peter, James, and John. We are going to go to the room. They were, they were people of faith. He needed a faith atmosphere, you know? And, and he said, well, you, the three of you come, and they went in, and in that room where the atmosphere was there, and, and, and faith was there, Jesus spoke and said, praise unto the Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you're for your miracle to happen, for healing, miracles, deliverance, sometimes we don't create an atmosphere for, for God. The Bible says, on the day of creation, on the day of creation, the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the earth. What are the Spirit of God hovering around the face of the earth? That is the atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. God couldn't do it without an atmosphere. Miracles is, you know, creation, that's a miracle. Creation is going to come forth. But miracle needs an atmosphere. It needs a, it's a certain atmosphere. In that atmosphere, God will do his miracles. Hallelujah. In this atmosphere, when he said no, because the atmosphere wasn't there. But what was the atmosphere that was there was, oh, panic, really. atmosphere, anxiety, worry, depressed. Lack of faith. Being too conscious of the problem. You're too focused on the problem. Jesus can do a miracle. But when Mary turned up and the servant turned up, amen, and they said, yeah, we are going to, we believe, and we're willing to work. Hallelujah. We've got to go to the edge of the city to get the water. How many minutes work involved? Hallelujah. It's work involved. When I say, I call it the work of faith. What is it? That whatever God tells you to do, you do it. And, and I, sometimes it takes a little bit of time before the, the, the water jars become full of, full of water. Hallelujah. So how many trips have you made? 20 trips, 50 trips, who knows how many there are big, big, six big water bottle jars. Takes a bit of a time to go to the, to, to the well and bring the water to the to the, to, to the house, the man, it takes a bit of time. Miracles sometimes take time with God. We keep working and hallelujah. We just keep believing. We just keep need to do it. Keep pressing on, persevering. What are you doing for your miracle? Uh, you know, it, it's a, sometimes it's just prayer. It might be just praying. It might be faith confession. It might be just standing your ground. Standing here, God, I'm, I'm praying, I'm believing, I'm confessing, I'm standing. God of an expectation. That's what happened. Mary said, whatever you So they stood there, right? Standing. Yeah, that looks better. I'm waiting. Dear Lord Jesus, move, move this situation. I'm waiting. I haven't gone anywhere. Amen. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm rooted here. I'm staying here. I'm waiting. God, I'm believing. That you Jesus, you're going to do it. Lord, I thank you for the miracle that's coming. I Lord, it's been six months, Lord, it's been two years, Lord. Lord, says, Lord, but I'm still waiting. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm seeking uh, from His head. And Lord, I thank you. That's, you know, that's pleasing to God. Amen? Amen. Waiting is pleasing to God. But you need to wait in faith. Yeah. So, what do you mean, wait in faith? Wait in faith is how you're thinking while you're waiting. Are you anxious? Are you problem conscious? Are you see, keep seeing Goliath? 
Hallelujah. You keep saying, you read the news on the, on the TV screen. Oh my God. Hallelujah. TV screen sets any little faith you have in you. Amen. It's all bad news. The gospel is all good news. Hallelujah. Are you looking at a lot of the bad news? Maybe something has gone wrong with your children. You're meditating on, oh, little girl, my boy. Oh. As bad as we got to be, but do you come back and say, God, I'm believing for my child to return. Lord, I'm believing for the salvation of my children. Lord, I'm believing for my job to return. Lord, I thank you. You're going to bless me. Prophet, me. I know, Lord, uh, Goliath is out there. He's screaming at me. Lord, but I'm believing. I'm standing and believing. And what do you want me to do? God? Here I stand. I believe. I thank you, God. Now, that is the attitude of faith. Hallelujah. You focus on the problem. You do not have the atmosphere for a miracle. God cannot do it. Amen. Sometimes we got to change as well. Amen. And sometimes it's a bit of a long time, you know, like some people have believed for a long time. And, hey, that is still pleasing to God. Hallelujah. When God finds it, he does not. He says, when, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find faith? Amen. Amen. It's a very interesting statement that Jesus, with all the things that Jesus would have asked for, he just said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? People might have lost their faith. And I want you to keep your faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus God. Believe that He'll deliver you. Believe that He'll heal you. Believe that He'll restore you. Maybe it's taken one year, maybe it's taken two years, maybe it's taken five years, you know. We do not know how long is the journey it is from the house to the well. Hallelujah. And I don't know how many trips you've got to make, but as long as you're making the trip, you're pleasing to God. Hallelujah. As long as you're making the trip, you're like maybe, you know, you, you need uh, 20 trips, you only make five trips. God means a great please. And he said, My son or daughter, in whom I'm well pleased, she's making, making the journey. Amen. She's doing what she can. You've got to be waiting and you need to be working. Hallelujah. What, and, and Jesus finally says that uh, go and take that water, fills up that six water pots. The water is filled to the brim. Hallelujah. Nobody, you know, uh, until this point of time, it's still water. Amen. Six big jars of water. It's not wine yet. It's not wine. And sometimes, you know, uh, there is a certain level, a level, you know, a level. Uh, the level is a tiny you know, a level where you need to fill up the measure of your faith and of your work. Which means you keep doing it, but uh, your faith is your be faith is believing, work is doing. Hallelujah. You believe and you do. And 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 Bible says that. Until the water pot is full, I'll, to the brim, and then to the brim, fill overflowing. One more drop will overflow. Jesus said, No, you must fill it to the brim. Don't let it overflow. Fill it to the brim. That takes time. Yeah. Amen. So some miracles take time. You're still thinking, God, why God has not answered your prayer? It takes time. Some miracles take time. Six water pot, six water pots take a long time to be filled. Hallelujah, it takes time. But then once the water pot is filled, he said, take it to the master of the feast and let him taste it. And the master of the feast drinks it and he says, this is the best one that I've tasted. Hallelujah. And as she begins to, no miracles are like that, as she begins to pour the water into the cup, it turns into wine. Come down. Sometimes our God is the eleventh hour God. How many of you know the eleventh hour God? Eleventh hour God, come on, people. Eleventh hour God. He never turns up early. He never turns. He never turns up early. He always turns up on time. Amen. Can you say that with me? God never turns up early. God turns up on time. When the water part is built, when faith is exhibited, when we are co-laboring with Christ Jesus. When we are holding on to his promises, we are not allowing the devil to, uh, to discourage us. And you are in faith. Amen. And I am in faith. And when we are in faith, at the appointed time, God will turn up. But the one thing that I learned about this whole thing is that the timing is not actually even determined by Christ, it's determined by Mary and the Son. Amen? Because he just said, My time has not yet come. So somehow when you exercise faith, when you work with God, whatever is meant to you will even come sooner. 
give you an example. Give you an example, sir. The zero, the zero mission lady, the, 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 the healing and the miracles and the gospel was supposed to happen after Jesus died and rose and the disciples went and prayed, went and, and, and evangelized the other world, the heathens. Amen? But this lady said, come to her, come to Jesus and say, I've got a prayer request. And Jesus turns around and tells her, hey lady, I can't give the children bread to dogs. What he means by that is, you're not eligible. What he means is, your time has not yet come for the, for the Jews, the time has come for you. So it will come after I'm ascended and the Holy Spirit is poured forth and yeah, your time will come later. You know, timing, we talked about timing now. You know, this lady is not eligible because Jesus came for the children of Israel and children of Israel alone. Hallelujah, sent to the lost people of Israel. Amen. But uh, this lady says, uh, uh, and, and, and faith again, faith again, faith again. Faith begins to speak. But Lord, the, uh, the, even the dog, I may be a dog, you know, but can you let some of the crumbs that fall from the table, can I have that? <laughs> Amen. He did not let Jesus go. Amen. He could have, yeah, man. He gave a, a, a very offensive answer. Offensive. But she didn't let Jesus go. He said, okay, I know I'm not deserving. I know I'm a, a heathen. I know miracles will take place after the day of Pentecost. You know, I know, I know the timing all, but uh, I am here. Uh, can I eat the crumbs and fall from the master's table? I want something. Amen. I want my miracle now. My daughter can't wait for day of Pentecost. Amen. Amen. My daughter can't wait for that. We need a miracle today, not two, two years from now. We need it today, Lord. Would you please give us a miracle? Jesus turned around and said, Yes. She got it before the timing. The timing. Amen. Before the timing. And he received the miracle. I want to say to you, when we are in faith, when we are walking in God, when we are cooperating, you know, we hasten, listen, you hasten the time of your miracles. You hasten it. You hey, maybe it's an appointed time, but hasten it. Faith and, 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 and works of cooperation hastens the time of the Lord. If the seed of Phoenician woman can receive her miracle, hallelujah, the heathen can receive the miracle which was supposed to be at a later time, you and I can faith and working with God. I believe you all are in different ways. You're believing God and you're doing something, whether you're uh, confessing the word, reading the word, or, or whatever, you know, whatever you're doing and hanging on to God. So I just want to say to you, you know, don't dwell on that in any way. I believe most of you are doing the right thing. And But I want to say sometimes miracles take time. Six water pots have to be filled to the brim. Hallelujah. Not one water pot, but six water pots has to be filled to the brim, and uh, that takes time. So when, 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 when those things take place, uh, then Jesus says, uh, you know, go and serve the kind of miracle things. I want to encourage you today. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you today. If a miracle hasn't happened, just keep on doing what you're doing. Do the works of faith. Have faith and do the works of faith. Hallelujah, whatever that may be. And maybe, maybe one of the things we can ask is, Lord, is there something that you want me to do? Amen. Holy Ghost, is there something you want me to do? If he tells you what to do, just do that. Amen. Just ask him, only he knows. Uh, but if he doesn't tell you anything, say, God, I'm standing on your word. I'm believing in faith. Lord, I'm believing for you to heal me, to restore me, and to make me whole. Have faith. Amen. I, I want to say, how many of you got mustard seed size faith? Put up your hand. Mustard seed size. If you got that, you got what it takes. Hallelujah. You got what it takes. Because you think you got that size of faith, you can move mountain. Hallelujah. And miracles are moving mountain. And just stand, believe, do not give up, trust God, confess the word of God, be in prayer, declare God's blessing over your life, over your situation, over your God. I mean, God has got to say, Lord, I thank you that you I thank the Lord you're making a way where there's no way. 
I thank you, Lord, the government may do this and that. But, Lord, I believe that you are my employer. Jesus Christ, you are my employer. I'm looking for a job from you. You know, whatever it is you need, you're healing. And just saying, I'm claiming, I'm believing. This is how faith speaks. Faith doesn't talk about the problem. Talk, faith talks about God's answers. I thank you. I claim it. I claim it. I don't see it, but I claim it. Hallelujah. I thank you it's going to happen to me. I thank you, Lord, you're going to have good things happen. And I thank you. You're restoring me, restoring my children. You're making me whole. You're healing my body. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. You're renewing my mind. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. Signs and wonders and miracles. This church, we're believing for signs and wonders and miracles. I'm in trouble with that. Hallelujah. I want you to believe. I want you to expect. I want you to work with the Lord. And uh, there may be a delay. A delay is not a denial. I just want to say this. If God delays your answer, does not mean God wants to deny it. So something need to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Maybe it's timing. Maybe you need to do something. Hallelujah. Uh, the faith in uh, the God, just as we need to do that, God will do signs and wonders and miracles in Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready for miracles? Amen. And uh, do the work of faith. Wait patiently, waiting, but also doing it. Let's send your feet tomorrow. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just close your eyes and uh, whatever is the miracle that you need from God, you know, just, you know, even today, properly, let us just stretch your hands and let's claim that. Amen. Let's claim that. Father, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I've given them the word that you've given me to preach this Sunday morning. You want us to grow quite strong in faith. I thank you that you will answer the prayer that we are in Kenya. You're just as interested in us and our needs, Lord, that our life may experience joy, happiness, wholeness, fulfillment, healing, restoration. Lord, our needs are different, but just as important as the wedding of Cana. I thank you, God, that every person who heard this message and Lord, as uh, Lord, as they begin to to, to exercise faith and, and and work with you, Lord, do whatever you tell them to do. I thank you, God, that you are going to do a miracle in them. It's not happening today, but next week, next month. But I thank you, Lord. You are the God who, who blesses us, Lord. I thank you, God. Uh, your Jehovah Rapha who heals, Lord God. Your Jehovah Jireh who provides our God. Your Jehovah Shama, the God who is there, Lord God. Lord, your Jehovah breakthrough too, Lord. I thank you, God. We call upon the name of the Lord. We call upon and we trust and we hang on to your, your tail coat, Lord, until you come and deliver us from our malady. We praise and thank you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And let's give the Lord a clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. And join us for the cup of tea.